Hi, YouTube. It's Adrian. I'm coming to you from my bedroom. I'm not in a shaky car. Hooray. I told myself I am filming in my bedroom, not in my car, and I did it. So I probably have like five minutes before a kid comes barging in here because this is the third time I have filmed this video in the last half an hour. So I have to hurry and try to get through this. So um, I'm going to start with my symptoms. Um, I am seven weeks and one day today. I would say probably right around the six week mark exactly, like to the day, I really started to feel sick to my stomach. Um, it came about at evening time and I just wanted to lay on the couch and curl up in a ball. I felt like I just wished I would throw up and I didn't. And that's kind of been the story since then. Um, which is really weird because in my previous three pregnancies, I um, I get up in the morning, I feel icky, I throw up stomach acid, and then the rest of the day, I'm like, I'm good to go. I'm just feeling great. Um, this time around, I've noticed that I feel okay in the morning when I wake up. I don't throw up and then progressively seem to get worse throughout the day. And then by the time evening comes around, I really feel gross. Um, it works if I don't eat, but it's really hard to eat. Um, food in general, most of the time, doesn't sound good. And certain things will just sound like amazing. And if I don't get that specific thing and eat it within like 20 minutes, that feeling of like, oh, I'm actually hungry for that. I could actually eat that. It quickly turns into, oh, ugh, no, I can't even, like the thought of it will even make me sick. So it's been this really delicate balancing act of trying to find food that I feel like eating and then eat it before it turns into something that's going to make me nauseous. It's very different this time around. Um, and I, this is kind of how I felt with my very, very first pregnancy. Um, just generally not good. And I got to say, I prefer throwing up every single morning to feeling like crap all day long. It's just hard. And, you know, with my first, uh, it, it was okay because I could lay down. I could take it easy. I could you know, just kind of curl up in a ball and watch TV and hang out. Whereas this time around, you know, I have five other kids that I am obligated to get up and make lunches and make breakfast and get them off to school and run kids to preschool and I'm going to work myself and it's just, um, it's just, it's taking a lot out of me this time. So, um, my energy level has really been depleted this last week. I definitely feel like I've been hit by a ton of bricks by about 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And it's that heavy, you know, your eyes just are like closing on their own. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I just want to sleep. And really, realistically, the only way I'm going to be able to take a nap is if my one-year-old falls asleep with me, and Ian's there to kind of watch over all the other kids. Today, I got a nap, and it was amazing. And although usually I wake up from my nap kind of cranky, um, I do generally feel better throughout the day afterwards. So that was really nice to get a nap today. But um, I, when I do get my little spurts of feeling good, it may be half an hour, it may be a couple hours. So I feel like the second that I feel okay, I'm rushing around, doing laundry, sweeping the floor, cleaning toilets, you know, um, just hurrying and getting done what I can because I feel like if I don't do that, I'm gonna miss that opportunity and feel icky again and fall behind on all my other stuff. Um, any of you that are watching that have a big family, you know that it's like one day. If you slack off for one single day, it just 
the whole system just breaks down. It really truly feels like that. Like, um, my house is a fine-tuned machine, and it has to be a specific way every day, um, or it just, you lose control really fast. Laundry piles up, dishes pile up. So it, you know, it's um, definitely something I should have expected as a possibility for me to feel sick. But because my last three pregnancies were pretty similar, I guess I just didn't feel like I was going to feel this way. You know, I was just expecting it to be the same as it has been. And I, it's just really thrown me for a loop. So um, what else? My... I am still nursing um, my 16-month-old, and I have noticed that I'm a little bit sore. Like, I'm sensitive. My nipples are sensitive. When she's eating, um, it hurts a little bit, especially when she's first, like, latching on, and I'm kind of like, oh, you know, it's just not a, it's not, like, excruciatingly painful. It's just not comfortable. Um, and so I'm hoping that that's just something that will pass. I'm not really sure. Um, how that's going to work out, but we're going to try to get through that because she's not it's showing any signs whatsoever of being ready to, to stop. So I, I do feel that my OB will probably suggest that I stop nursing because that's what he did with my last pregnancy because I was still nursing during that time period too, and he told me that that is just too strenuous on your body. You know, it's really, really hard on your body to um, nourish a child and to be, like, growing a child. And, you know, I took his advice, and I did end up weaning my daughter. And afterwards, I was really disappointed with myself about it. And the more research I did, you know, I realized it doesn't have to be that way. You know, I just need to make sure I'm consuming a few more calories, making sure I'm taking my vitamins, getting really healthy, good nutrition, and it's fine. Women do it all the time, all over the world, and they're fine. So that's that. Um, I won't be taking his advice this time if that's what he chooses to say to me. So um, what else can I tell you? Emotionally, I have been a lot more stable this pregnancy. I um, tend to get really short on patience and really like like I have like roid rage or something I don't know I'm just very angry a lot of the time during early pregnancy this time I really feel fairly good I'm not going to say normal but I'm going to say a lot more normal than I have in previous pregnancies so once again this pregnancy has just been very different um what else what else so this whole food thing, okay, it's been like random craving and it's like I want that and I need to have just that because that sounds good and that's what I'm going to eat. The first night it was chips and salsa from this specific restaurant and my sweet mom was so nice, drove all the way down to that restaurant and got me chips and salsa and that's what I had for dinner was a whole bag of chips and salsa. Um, I, I did that with tomato soup one day and ate an entire quart of tomato soup to myself. Um, I have been craving prime rib. How weird is that? Like, I still haven't gotten that one fulfilled. And actually tomorrow night, Ian and I are going to try to go out and get some, some prime rib or some steak or something because I can't get it off my mind. And then these. I don't know if you guys have ever tried these. They are these cute little pumpkin taffies. I think it's black licorice flavor. Um, they only come around Halloween time. And these are my favorite candy ever in the entire world. I love these taffies. Last year, I couldn't find them in the stores anywhere. And I was so bummed. I thought they quit making them. And the other day, I was at my local grocery store, and I saw these, and I bought, like, way more than I'll ever be able to eat of them. But I'm so happy about my little taffy, so I had to show you guys these. Do you know about these? Does 
anybody like these? Is this just me? I don't know. Anyways, um, my whole family's like, ew. Like, I tried to give them to my kids, and they didn't like them, and I'd be like, score! Like, I don't have to share. That's horrible, right? Anyway, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I'm sure there is. Um, I'm having really vivid dreams, you know. That's pretty much throughout pregnancy, doesn't stop. I feel like um, the whole peeing a million times has kind of maybe slowed down a little bit, um, but not a ton. I'm still going bathroom a lot more than usual. And water, ice water, has been my biggest craving. I chug so much water, and I'm the type of person that, like, I struggle to drink water a lot of the time. I just, it's not my favorite. You know, I'm a, a soda person. I'm a diet soda person nonetheless, which is horrible for you. No, I have not been drinking soda at all. I have cut soda completely out of my diet. Um, and I just can't get enough ice water, which that's awesome. You know, what a great craving. My body is, I guess maybe I feel like I'm listening more to what my body is telling me that I want and need, so that's good. Um, my sex drive has been existence, and that's good because, um, once again, I feel like in my previous pregnancies, it's one of the first things to go. Um, I'm just, I have no interest whatsoever. It's just crappy, and um, so this time I just feel like I kind of feel normal in that area, so yay for that. Um, so tomorrow is Monday, and um, I have my follow-up ultrasound for my um, subchorionic hematoma. Um, so tomorrow I get to see the baby again, which I'm so excited about, and um, get to see that heartbeat again. and. I'm really praying that everything is resolving. I really truly feel like it is. I um, haven't had any spotting of that sort um, since my ultrasound last week. I did have some spotting yesterday, but that was after intercourse. And so I know it was directly correlated to that. Regardless, like, just not a fun feeling. You know, nobody wants to see blood. Um, when they wipe. Like, that's just never settling. But I am, you know, confident that it was directly related to that. So I'm really hoping I'll just get this all. Everything looks great. It looks like everything's resolved and there's no more blood. And that's what I'm hoping for. Um, and then, af directly after my ultrasound tomorrow, I have my first OB appointment. Um, and so they do that, the ultrasound is right in my OB office, and then I'll just go into my doctor right after. So I will um, have my first ultrasound, and then I'll, or, you guys, no, my first, um, get to see, like, what my weight is, and that's always a joy. I, I, I feel like I've probably lost a little bit of weight just because I haven't been, like, eating, you know, my appetite just hasn't really been existent, um, and he'll probably try to hear the heartbeat, um, with the Doppler, I don't know if they try to do that this early, but he probably will try, and, um, hopefully he'll be able to just go over my ultrasound result results with me at my appointment so that I don't have to wait another day again, because it's kind of hard to wait, you know, like, already been waiting a whole week for this ultrasound on pins and needles. I want to know. I want to know right after what is going on. So, um, I think that's all. Um, I don't know if I mentioned my skin already. I, my skin has definitely not gotten worse. Um, it, isn't great, but it's not as bad as it was, so that's good. Um, I don't feel like I covered everything. I'm not sure if I did, but I will update you guys tomorrow after my appointment and uh, let you guys know what they 
set up an ultrasound and how my first doctor's visit was. So um, I guess I'll plan on seeing you guys then. Talk to you later. Bye.